So sometimes a guy's story is requested and there's really not a ton of information there to do a full what happened to video. That's usually where you'll get something like a where are they now or you know, a shorter video instead. But for this one, that's not a problem. As a matter of fact, there's so much information in this video. It's one of the longest videos I've done, especially in a while. And I tried to get plenty of detail in here while not boring you guys. And I think we found a pretty good balance. Now, in this story, there are multiple lessons. There's multiple things that you're gonna be able to take with you. Also, I'd encourage you to stick around to the end as this is a bit of a redemption story. And a lot of people don't know the other side of it. But either way, I'm sure you guys are gonna enjoy it. If you do, don't forget, click the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're brand new, and don't forget to check the playlist, man. We've got a lot of videos already made that I'm starting to see requested over and over. I'm like, bro, that video's already done. Anyway, man, other than that, let's go ahead and jump into the video. I'll see y'all at the end. So Maurice grew up in Youngstown, Ohio. And unfortunately, he had one of those dads who left the crib when Maurice was only a toddler. Let me say this real quick. If you have a kid, it's gonna get inconvenient. But guess what? You made that choice. That kid is now your responsibility and they need you, man. So stop being a little and take care of your damn kids. Moving on, Maurice grew up in a crime riddle place. When he was young, he recalls playing football on the street and then bam, out of nowhere, drive-by shooting takes place and one of the kids ends up losing his life. So most people lack true empathy in these situations and they don't realize the lasting trauma this type of thing can cause and how it can manifest itself in different ways over time. Now, common sense should tell you that if you live in an area like this, you probably don't have money for therapy because if you did, you'd use that would-be therapy bread to move to a safer environment. Maurice would later feel a lot of guilt for quote, making it out, while many people that he grew up with were still struggling and dying in the streets. Maurice Claret was a highly touted high school running back who was named Offensive High School Player of the Year by USA Today. He received offers from Notre Dame, Miami, amongst other schools, but of course, he chose Ohio State. Maurice's story is one that I believe is caused by a perfect storm of events and circumstances, coupled with the way that Maurice responded to these events and circumstances. Maurice's own success hurt him. So right off the bat, Maurice was listed as a starter as a true freshman, making him the first Ohio State freshman starting running back since 1943. That's obviously dope, but dealing with that early success can cause issues with many of us. I tend to think of child stars as the easiest and most consistent correlation, also rappers who blow up at a young age. Every now and then you'll find some that handle that success relatively well. Those people usually have an incredibly strong support system, while other so-called support system is really just leaning on the child star or rapper for support. Trent Richardson comes to mind in this situation. People in these situations usually end up making strings of horrible choices that lead down a dark path and basically their star burns so bright that it has no choice but to flame out a few years down the line. Maurice has admitted in multiple interviews that he definitely received preferential treatment and it caused him to feel that he was above the law. And you don't, you don't often identify with anyone anymore because you're a celebrity in your own space. And oftentimes um, you don't believe that rules apply to you because people naturally treat you different. You know, they don't, um, they don't hold you to the same standards or uh, your access to everything becomes very easy, you know, from women to, um, to connections to people to, to anything that you basically want in life, you basically have that access. And so uh, looking back, I think your, uh, your perspective is kind of jaded, you know, your perception of the world and how it's supposed to operate and work is jaded. This is a reoccurring issue for him, one that he later recognizes and takes steps to combat. But that's something we're going to talk about later in the video. Now, in his very first game, dude rushed for 175 yards and three touchdowns. In his third game, he rushed for 230 yards, averaging 7.4 per carry. He proceeded to go over 100 yards in the next four games straight until being injured versus Penn State on October 26, 2002. Now, he missed the following week due to injury, but had become a bit of an egomaniac, so decided to keep his spirits up by reading fan mail. 
Now, earlier in the month, Maurice had been quoted by ESPN, the magazine, saying that he thought about leaving school early. Now, keep in mind, he's only a true freshman at this point. Either way, of course, it's his life, it's his career. But when he began opening his fan mail, much of it was hate mail based on those exact comments. So imagine this harsh reality for a moment. You're the man. Everybody loves you. Then he hits you. Most of that love is very conditional. It only exists based on what you can do for a person. Once you can no longer do that thing or refuse to do it, that love will evaporate. It's the definition of fake love. Now, obviously not every fan is like this, but it only takes a few for it to feel like a majority. Trust me, as a YouTuber, streamer, this is something you have to fight very hard because the human brain is just wired this way. You'll read 20 great comments. If you see two bad ones, it really sticks out. Now, to be clear, I believe Maurice's issues were already embedded in him at this point, but I do look at this moment as the potential trigger that may have been flipped, causing some buried issues to arise in Maurice. I think Brian Tracy said, you can't control what happens to you, but you can't control your attitude toward what happens to you. And in that, you'll be mastering change rather than allowing it to master you. Maurice was unable to do that here and he chose to go down a really destructive path. Anyway, he comes back, Ohio State beats Michigan to finish his undefeated regular season and move on to the national championship. Now, here's the big issue. On December 21st, 2002, Maurice Claret's childhood friend, Juan Bell, who was 23 years old, lost his life after being shot multiple times. Maurice naturally wanted to go back to Youngstown to attend the funeral, but he stated that Ohio State gave him the runaround when he asked to fly home to attend the funeral service. Now, here's each side of the story. Maurice says school officials never answered his request to fly home to attend the funeral due to the upcoming championship game. He claimed that Ohio State didn't want to shift the attention from their national championship to inner city violence. Now, after that, Ohio State reps came out and said that Maurice did not file the proper paperwork. But then a little bit of a conflicting story. Andy Geiger, Ohio State's athletic director, said we told Maurice that he could fly home. OK, so he's saying that it's not about the paperwork, but here's the conditions. He said if he could buy a ticket home and back, then we could reimburse him once the paperwork is filed. Maurice elected not to do that or couldn't afford that or there wasn't anybody in his family who could do it. We were stuck in a place where the rule is we couldn't go forward and buy a ticket. So we already talked about the fact that Maurice didn't come from a background where money was plentiful, so him not being able to afford a ticket home makes sense. The NCAA rules are ridiculous and we know that they do everything possible to suppress student athletes from receiving any monetary benefits. So Ohio State's claims, I guess, also make sense. Here's my thing, I'm not from Ohio, but a quick Google search tells me that Youngstown, where Maurice is from, is only about a two and a half hour drive from Ohio State. And again, the NCAA rules are crazy, but it feels like a coach could have taken Maurice down for the funeral. I'm sure they made the trip at some point when they were recruiting him in the first place, so why not now? And if the rules do somehow forbid this, I refuse to believe that Ohio State or any other successful college football program has always followed every single rule to a T. But it seems that they didn't deem this situation worth the risk. And yo, that kind of sucks, man. So me, of course, I'm pro person and I always want to lean that way. But there are some statements that Maurice made years down the line that calls all of this into question, right? Maurice has stated multiple times, bro, that he received illegal benefits while in college, okay? At one point, he said he was making more money in college than he did in the UFL, which he was making about 50 grand per season in the UFL, all right? So if that's the case, how would the plane ticket have been an issue? It's possible that Maurice didn't start receiving these benefits until after the season, which seems a little unlikely, but the whole thing definitely feels a bit shaky. And basically, either things lined up in a really weird way, Maurice lied about the benefits, or he was told or made to believe that he couldn't take the trip 
due to an issue with that paperwork that Ohio State was talking earlier, meaning he could afford it, but they just made him believe that he was not allowed to go. I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Now, Ohio State went on to win the national championship, a game where Maurice both stripped the ball from the late great Sean Taylor after the quarterback threw a pick and also scored the game-winning touchdown in double overtime, finishing his freshman season with 1,200-plus yards and 18 touchdowns. But after a messy season off the field, Maurice and Ohio State were headed for an ugly divorce. During that offseason, Maurice had multiple issues, so I'm going to try to condense these as much as I can because I don't want this video to last forever. July 12, 2003, the New York Times quotes a teaching assistant at Ohio State who says Maurice got preferential treatment. She says he walked out of a midterm exam but passed the class after the professor gave him an oral exam. Nothing to see here. This happens at every university. July 29, 2003, Ohio State confirms the NCAA is investigating Maurice's claim that more than $10,000 in clothing, CDs, cash, and stereo equipment was stolen from a vehicle that Maurice borrowed from a local dealership. Again, these are some of these benefits we're talking about. This one feels like the dealership gave Maurice a card that he shouldn't have had. Then the stuff comes up missing. Could have actually been the guy who gave it to him trying to inflate the debt Maurice owed him so he could cash in after Maurice went pro. But who knows, man? My theory is Maurice initially files a police report but later backs down from those claims after being threatened for involving the police in the first place. September 9, 2003. Maurice is charged with misdemeanor falsification for the police report on the theft the charge carries a penalty ranging from probation to six months in jail and a one thousand dollar fine september 23rd 2003 couple weeks later maurice sues the nfl challenging the rule that a player must be out of high school three years to be eligible for the draft so at this point maurice definitely wants out he clearly owes cats money and things are starting to catch up with him He's ready to have his own bread and have it right now so he can clear up all of these debt issues. May 24th, 2004, the second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals formally rules against Maurice. The ruling means that he won't be eligible for a supplemental draft and will have to wait for the 2005 draft to enter the NFL but also cannot return to college football. Now later that year, Maurice got mixed up with an Israeli mobster who was said to have provided Maurice with cash cars and bodyguards all under an agreement that maurice would have to pay 60 percent of his rookie contract in order to pay that debt back obviously a horrible deal but it's kind of like a payday loan you need this cash now well guess what you're gonna agree to absolutely horrible terms maurice then took that money that he obtained through the most ill-advised irresponsible means imaginable and started doing even more irresponsible ridiculous dumb stuff he started partying uncontrollably he said that he was trying to fill a void in his life and i know from experience the club is one of those places where there's more fake alcohol induced temporary love and fulfillment than anywhere else so of course living this lifestyle maurice got woefully out of shape and despite a late effort to get ready for the nfl combine in 05 he showed up there and ran a 4 7 40. then he refused to do any other workouts Amazingly, Maurice was selected in the third round by the Broncos, yet says he was disappointed and thought about not going. When I heard him say that, I was like, bro, are you serious? <laughs> I was like, you are, you went in the third round, that's a blessing. But anyway, I guess he was saying he was disappointed that he hadn't cashed in on his own potential, but I'm like, yo, you're still in the league, like you still have an opportunity to reach your potential. But at this point, he was pretty far down the alcohol well, and while he did end up going, he showed up to practices still drunk multiple times, hungover, he stayed by himself all the time and was dealing with some pretty deep depression. Maurice then opted to not accept a four-year deal with a guaranteed $413,000 and instead opted for a potentially more lucrative deal that was all incentive-based again not a smart move but i don't know what kind of debt he was in with the israeli guy at this point not to mention all of his other debts and him wanting to live a certain type of lifestyle so he decided to go for all or nothing he got the ladder maurice was released for a string of issues before he ever even played a preseason game 
Then he began receiving death threats that could have come from the mobster, agents, lawyers, etc. In addition to being a full-fledged alcoholic at this point, being depressed and fearing for his life. This led Maurice to make even more terrible choices, likely in a cry out for help. January 1st, 2006, he's accused of robbing two people at gunpoint in an alley behind a Columbus bar and is wanted by police on two counts of aggravated robbery. Now, now check this out, bro. He's in Columbus, probably down the street from Ohio State, and he robs two people at gunpoint in an alley. My man was clearly, clearly gone at this point, man. Then on August 9th, he was arrested after a high-speed chase that police say started when he refused to pull over after a traffic violation. He made an illegal U-turn, led the cops on a high-speed chase, and if you ever played Need for Speed, High Pursuit, or something like that, you know what happened next. They dropped that spike strip on my boy Maurice, and that, of course, ended the chase. Here's what they found in Maurice's ride. A katana, three loaded handguns, and a loaded AK-47 variant, along with the open bottle of Grey Goose. Dude was wearing a full Kevlar body armor getup, and this, I'm pretty sure, was in connection with the mob guy he'd gotten involved with. Mixed with his drinking problem, depression, and paranoia, all of which obviously is a bad, bad, bad mixture. All right. On September 18, 2006, only four years after his national championship, Maurice was sentenced to seven years in prison. Now, in prison, Maurice was forced to get the help that he should have been afforded outside of prison. But he took alcohol treatment classes, anger management classes, and began writing down his thoughts, which his girlfriend posted in blog format online. It was called The Mind of Maurice Claret. And that really served as a form of therapy for him. This is actually something I'd recommend for anybody dealing with internal struggles. It sounds a little cheesy, but it's something I do pretty often, and it often helps you to organize your thoughts and it gives you an outlet. Here's an excerpt from Maurice's blog. This is my inspirational speaking and consciously thinking forum. This is how I plan on networking to begin public speaking. I love the question and answer format. I enjoy giving to others what so many have given to me during this time away. The next deal I plan to close is that regarding my college education. Trust and believe when I return to the shoe, I will leave with my degree. Now Maurice ended up serving three and a half years and got out of jail early due to good behavior. And just like he said, he went back to Ohio State for a bit and did get some help from Jim Trestle getting back into the UFO fell and planned for the Omaha Nighthawk. There he was actually signed by the same guy who drafted him into the NFL in the first place. I'm talking about second chances. Although it's ironic because the decision to draft Maurice may have contributed to that GM going from the NFL to the UFL, but I don't know. Anyway, he didn't play amazingly, but he played. And that's a win, right? He was a model citizen there, volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club. He lived modestly and obviously had learned that his behavior could spiral easily when money was introduced. So when he was playing in the UFL, he made $50,000 for an eight game season, which is actually not bad at all, but he requested to not be paid weekly like everybody else. He wanted to be paid at the end of the year in an attempt to continue his modest lifestyle. I honestly don't know if that's the greatest idea to get a large lump sum at the end, but the good news is that Maurice at least recognized one of his triggers and attempted to control it. He also shifted his attention to develop his mind by reading psychology books and as much business related literature as he could. And he managed to turn his life around, man. And by sharing his life story, he's actually become a pretty highly sought after motivational speaker. He's worked with some other mental health advocates to promote expansion of Medicaid in Ohio. He's spoken at prisons, juvenile detention centers, and worked with youth football camps to share his story so that others don't repeat it. But Maurice still is not perfect. And in January 2016, he was arrested again for drunk driving. So as you can see, it's an ongoing process, but let's put it in perspective, all right? This is his only incident like this since being released from prison in 2010, all right? So only one incident in the last eight years is really good to be honest, right? And that was in 2016, so we've had another two years of good behavior, you feel me? So there's the Maurice Claret story, and I told you, it's a story of redemption. I mean, this cat fell all the way off. I mean, he was at the top. He fell 
all the way off, man, so fast. So the fact that he's able to bounce back, be out of jail right now, living a normal life, and not just surviving, but actually making an impact, come on, man. But that's all we got for you, man. Don't forget, let me know who else y'all wanna see in the comments section below. Like the video, share the video, subscribe if you're new. My name's Flimlo Raps.